everybody! So we're up to the next film in our Disney canon rewatch that I've been doing all year and we are looking at one of the most popular. We are going to look at the 32nd animated classic from Walt Disney Animated Studios, The Lion King. The Lion King premiered in 1994 and it uh, is a really interesting film because it started out as kind of uh, the sort of bad news bears of the Disney uh, group. <laughs> the A lot of the, the big names, your Alan Menken, uh, people like that, a lot of the big name animators went to work on Pocahontas. And so it was more sort of this ragtag group that worked on The Lion King. And you got uh, Elton John in the music, you had Tim Rice involved in the lyrics, and they, Tim Rice had worked on the lyrics for Aladdin after Howard Ashman had passed away. And so they certainly were very qualified, but they had kind of a unique perspective going in to writing this movie. And it was really a movie made for children, made to appeal to children. Uh, and you know, a lot of people freak out, oh, animation, it's not for kids, it's not for kids. In this case, it's from their own mouths that they made this movie to appeal to children. And from Elton John, he says, Let's do it for kids because it's just a great story. But most of Disney animated movies have a kind of a Broadway score. So I said, let's not go for that. Let's go for a completely different feel and just write ultra pop songs kids would like. Then adults can go and see these movies, those movies, and get just as much pleasure out of them. I mean, adults buy a lot of pop records. So that's why you notice that in this film, it has less of a Broadway feel that you'd had in The Little Mermaid, in Beauty and the Beast, and has more of a pop influenced feel to it. They were trying to appeal to children and hoping that it would kind of corral in their parents as well. And I think they did a really, really good job. There are a few things where I think they pushed it a little bit too far on the kiddie spectrum, and we're gonna talk about that. And I don't, I don't think that the necessarily for me that the pop feel holds up quite as well as the Broadway feel. Of course, now this has been taken and turned into a Broadway musical, but that was only with significant changes that were made to it. So anyway, let's talk about what they ended up coming up with this group. Uh, so The Lion King, of course, it's the story. It's basically a Hamlet type narrative. It follows Simba, who starts out as a lion cub. He's introduced to the Pride Lands, to everybody as the new uh, new prince, as the new baby in the circle of life. And there's an incredible introduction. I mean, it's just zooms you right in, right into the story. The animation is gorgeous. Uh, the all the animals and you know just it really is an effective way to start out the film and then pretty quickly you get to meet Scar and Scar is I think the best Disney villain that we've ever had he is so wonderfully voiced by Jeremy Irons he is so disdainful he's a true sociopath as far as Disney is concerned this is not somebody who has any kind of backstory or appealing kind of thing he is a truly evil 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 person uh, but he has no remorse at all for anything that he does even to the point of killing his own brother and uh, he has no problem framing Simba anything he just it, like he's a sociopath he doesn't care and of course he has the hyenas that are following him kind of around or his stooges and then you have him trick Simba. There's sort of the, the little introduction where they the where Simba learns about being brave from his father. And we get the I just can't wait to be king song that's sung. And I really like that song. I think it's a little underrated as far as Disney songs. I really like the way the animation during that song gets kind of geometric and different. <laughs> And we get to the to the major point where Scar uh, sings to the hyenas about his plan of what he's gonna do and this is such a great villain song be prepared and Jeremy Irons actually I, or he sings and then I think Jim Cummings I think also helped 
because he had Jeremy Irons had a hoarse voice, uh, but you can't really tell. It feels like him singing, whereas some of the other parts, you can definitely tell it's not them singing, uh, which kind of annoys me a little bit. It just got this great sort of, the way they did the lighting and the colors, and it looks so green and Nazi-ish and all the- King undisputed, respected, saluted, and seen for the wonder I am. Yes, my teeth and ambitions are bad. Be prepared. He starts the stampede, which was groundbreaking at the time, and he has the chance to save his brother, but he does not. And he tells Simba, he says, run away, run away and never return. And so of course he does. And you can understand why Simba does that. Like he's a little kid. What does he know? And he's dealing with a sociopath who's very manipulative. And so it makes sense. And that's when he meets Timon and Pumbaa. And Timon and Pumbaa teach him about a new way of life. And so this is a different philosophy than his father has taught him. And they teach him about Hakuna Matata. And Hakuna Matata is a really fun little song. It, it means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem free philosophy. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata? Yeah, it's our motto. What's the motto? Nothing. What's the motto with you? <laughs> you know what? These two words will solve all your problems. That's it's definitely meant for kids. Uh, and, you know, has flatulence jokes and stuff like that. But you see him learn about this other way of living. And it's only until a little bit later when uh, Nala finds him and tells him about well, what has happened to the Pride Lands and it says that you have this opportunity to make a difference. And I, I think that that's a really interesting sort of thought study that we're presented with. Do you do what is easy and what is comfortable or do you do what is hard, but maybe your role, your, your space, like what is the right kind of choice to make? And, you know, it does sort of wonder, is like, why doesn't anybody else go against Scar? Why does it have to be Simba? I don't know, but there you go. And, uh, and so then we get, can you feel the love tonight? And I'm not really a fan of the way they handle this song. I, it's, it's a pretty good song. I like it, but they tr kind of ruin it. This is where they stretch that pop feel, that kid feel too far, and they make it into a joke. And I don't like that. This stinks. Oh. Sorry. Not you. Them. Him. Her. Alone. What's wrong with that? I can see what's happening. What? And they don't have a clue. Who? Oh. They'll fall in love, and here's the bottom line. Our trio's down to two. Oh. And I also wish that they had the characters singing the song instead of these other singers. And so that I think is a loss. I don't really like Can You Feel the Love Tonight. And then we get to the scene where Simba is calling out to his father. It's my favorite scene in the movie. And he says, you promised you'd always be there. You promised you'd always be there. And that to me, it gets me every time. That You can't change the past. You said you'd always be there for me. But you're not. And it's because of me. It's my fault. It's my fault. That makes me tear up because I just have felt that feeling sometimes with people that have have left and you know it's just like how could you leave me how could you do that and so I feel like that emotion is so real and so wonderfully done and of course then that's when he meets Rafiki and Rafiki says he lives he lives in you and that that's not my father it's just my reflection. No. Look hard. You see, he lives in you. That is such a wonderful segment. It's so satisfying. It's so emotional. 
and you see Simba go back and confront Scar and some people have a problem with this ending. I don't have a problem with that at all because yes, we know that the Rafiki tells Simba that the past hurts, but we can learn from it, right? Well, so some people are like, well, why don't the people accept him right away? Why, why are they still, you know, having these problems? Well, to me, it would be completely disingenuous if he came back after being gone all this time, and and here Scar's telling them that he's responsible for the death of Mufasa, and so it would be completely disingenuous for them to be like, okay, we accept you anyway, without even any thought or anything. Like, of course they take a second to think it over. They could still be under Scar's rule. They don't know how this is gonna end up. They've just basically been prisoners for all of this time. Of course they take a while. And, and, and it's not even that long. Like his mother does embrace him right when she first sees him. So I think that that, that is a, a really, really weak criticism for this movie, in my opinion, is people who criticize the ending. I think the ending really works. I think it's emotional. And it, you finally get uh, Simba to realize that he wasn't, it's not his fault. Uh, that all of this stuff that he'd been holding uh, that he thought was his fault is not his fault. And I think that's really emotional and really wonderful. This great sort of ending on the Pride Rock that finishes out the whole circle of the movie. And the animation is just stunning throughout this film. I love it. Uh, I think that it started a new sort of era in celebrity voice casting that you would then see also in Toy Story the that year. And so you, you saw even small parts like Whoopi Goldberg as one of the hyenas. You know, you see the Rowan Atkinson as Zazu. She didn't have that much in other Disney films. You got someone like Jodie Benson or something like that who was a Broadway star or Broadway singer uh, who just auditioned for the part. And so this was something that would then change animation going on. Uh, and you see it definitely in Shrek. Some other things, there's these sort of celebrity voice castings that you started with Lion King because it was such a, a mammoth success. I mean, it took a long time before Lion King was dethroned as the number one animated box office film ever. It covers a lot of emotional ground. It's sad, it's moving, it's scary, it's funny. It's got kind of a little bit of everything, which I think makes it a really nice film. I, I think that it has those moments of heart that really work. The music is good enough. It's solid enough. Love it as much as some other people do compared to the broad, more Broadway influenced songs, but I certainly like it. And I think that there are good songs. And uh, it's just overall a very, very entertaining movie. And one certainly up there in some of the best of Disney ever. Uh, it's not in my top 10 though, I don't think. We'll see how it comes out. But for me, I give The Lion King an A. I think it is just a very absorbing, very moving, very funny, uh, wonderful villain uh, Disney animated film. You can't go wrong with The Lion King. So let me know what you think of The Lion King. Is it your one of your favorites or is it a favorite of yours? Put it in the comments section. And uh, thanks so much. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you later. Bye.